Pep Guardiola has earned his reputation as the greatest coach of the modern era, but even he has made his fair share of dud signings over the years. He's had way more hits than misses, with the likes of Danny Alves, Robert Lewandowski, Bernardo Silva, and Erling Haaland, among the big-name arrivals that have thrived under his coaching. On the flip side, there are a number of big-money additions that just never clicked. We've identified 10 of the worst signings of Guardiola's managerial career. Alexander Hleb The Belarusian midfielder is fondly remembered at Arsenal, having been a technically gifted and hard-working member of Arsene Wenger's squad. He is not well known at Barcelona, where he was among Guardiola's first recruits in the revolutionary summer of 2008. At £12.75 million, Leb's signing appeared to be a masterpiece after excelling for Arsenal with some magical performances in England over the previous several seasons. Leb won the treble in his first season at the Camp Nou, although he was a peripheral and much ridiculed member of the club. Leb was anticipated to fit right in with the Barcelona club but that didn't happen when the Belarusian's professionalism was called into skepticism. Haleb's transfer proved to be a nightmare as he became a benchwarmer at Camp Nou. Years later, Haleb spoke frankly about his regrets in leaving Arsenal. Zlatan Ibrahimovic The controversial Swede completed his dream transfer to Barcelona for £52.13 million, while Samuel Eto'o moved in the opposite direction to Inter Milan. His career in Catalonia began spectacularly, with the Swedes scoring in all five league games for his new club, setting a record in the process. He played well on the pitch, scoring 21 goals in 45 games, but he was not a Barcelona player. He did not adjust to Barcelona's tiki-taka style of play at all. Zlatan and Guardiola also had a significant falling out during their time together, which continues to this day. Just a year after signing him, Barcelona agreed to sell him for £40 million, less than they spent. If you ask Guardiola what his biggest regret in management is, signing Ibrahimovic would be very high up on that list. The Ukrainian centre-back was brought in to bolster Guardiola's treble-winning Barcelona squad alongside Ibrahimovic in the summer of 2009. From Shakhtar Donetsk for a fee of £18.75 million, becoming the first Ukrainian to represent Barcelona. Pep Guardiola rated the youngster highly and saw enough of the defender during his five championship winning years with Shakhtar to sign the player as a long term replacement for the aging Carles Puyol. However, after a mediocre first season in Spain, where he made just 14 appearances, New Barca president Sandro Rosell sold Chagrinsky back to Shakhtar for £11.25 million against the wishes of Guardiola. Chagrinsky has no hard feelings about how things worked out, but still wonders today if things might have worked out differently. Mario Gotze Guardiola might have failed to deliver the Champions League for Bayern, but his three years in the Bundesliga were a period of unprecedented domestic dominance. You can argue that Gotze wasn't strictly a Guardiola signing, given that Bayern agreed to pay Dortmund a 37 million euros for his release clause months before his arrival. But they arrived the same summer, and the midfielder helped usher in the new era in Bavaria. Gotze wasn't a total disaster by any means. He actually scored more goals in fewer games than he did during his first stint with Dortmund, yet he struggled with injuries and never quite kicked on to become one of the world's best, as so many predicted he would be playing under Guardiola for one of Europe's elite clubs. Claudio Bravo Given what City have achieved by implementing Guardiola's non-negotiable play-out from the back play style, not even the oldest school of football dinosaurs could claim his decision to immediately bin off Joe Hart hasn't since been vindicated. The issue was identifying the right replacement. Chilean keeper Bravo had proven his adeptness at playing in a possession-based game with title-winning seasons at Barcelona. But he seemed to lose confidence in Manchester and made a number of high-profile errors that left proper football men like Richard Keyes yelping in delight. The following summer, City signed Ederson and never looked back. Bravo stuck around as a backup for another three years, 
and proved useful enough as a squad player. Nolito It's difficult to remember a time when Guardiola's city weren't an all-conquering juggernaut, but that first 2016-2017 season was puzzlingly skittish. Scattergun recruitment, inconsistent performances, no trophies, and ending up third, 15 points off the top. Nolito's move to Manchester City was short-lived and unremarkable, despite a relatively impressive start to life at the Etihad Stadium. His performances were inconsistent, and he failed to make a significant impact, leading to a quick departure from the club. Looking back, Nolito can be seen as the poster boy for Guardiola's lackluster betting in year. 30 appearances, 6 goals, 1 headbutt. He lasted one season in England and was sold back to Spain at a small loss. Benjamin Mendy Having played alongside the likes of Bernardo Silva, Fabinho, Falcao and Kylian Mbappé for that unforgettable title-winning Monaco side, Mendy arrived at Man City for a mammoth £52 million in the summer of 2017, a record fee for a defender at the time. But he was often injured and admitted to indiscipline off the pitch. He never justified that fee, and different allegations from six women resulted in him being suspended by the club. After a lengthy legal trial, Mendy was found not guilty. He's now suing his former club for unpaid wages. Calvin Phillips A really weird one that just never got going. A £45 million transfer fees the beating heart of Marcelo Bielsa's Leeds, and voted England's Player of the Year after being ever-present in the run to the Euro 2020 final. Yet you've always been left with the sense that Guardiola was never convinced, as evidenced by 911 minutes of football in 18 months. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, but City surely would have been better off keeping hold of Academy starlet Romeo Lavia and never signing Phillips. Still, six starts and five trophies during his time at Manchester City. There are worse ways to earn your wage. Kirison, a 14 million euros signing that never made a single appearance for the club. We're still left scratching our heads at what that was all about 15 years later. Kirison has to go down as one of the most bizarre Guardiola signings, although the blame may lie with the president rather than the coach himself for overseeing the transfer. The Brazilian forward was signed in 2009 for £10.5 million, a huge fee considering no one had really heard of him. The transfer proved to be a disaster for Barcelona. With the player never making an appearance for the team, Kirison was loaned out to Benfica, Fiorentina, Santos, Cruzeiro and Coritiba before joining the latter permanently after being released from the club in 2014. Granted, Guardiola has inherited three world-class teams in Barcelona, Manchester City and Bayern Munich, each filled with star players, so has never really been the type of coach to bring in a huge number of players to the clubs he has managed. His role has been more about finding the fight formula for his teams to dominate games while playing beautiful football. We felt we should take a look at some of his transfers that haven't quite worked out as expected. After all, even the best managers have blots on their comic books. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bells for more video on your favorite sport. Until the next one, please stay tuned.